This is a piece of music that our reporter in Ukraine, Joseph Lindsley, sent us yesterday from Lviv. Tell us about this, uh, Joe. Hello to you. Bob, good afternoon from Lviv. Uh, this song is by a musician I've shared his music with you all before, Slava Varkachuk. Uh, he has a PhD in physics. He was a member of parliament, and he's probably Ukraine's top rock star. Uh, and this song it means that the name means uh, it's the sad Buddha don't worry, everything will be okay. And it starts. He says, "I remember the time when the world was just beginning, going high into the mountains, taking a hike, with a hope as strong as love that everything will be good one day." And so that that sentiment really, we're feeling that here in Ukraine. In fact, on Friday, I went to this uh, Slava Varkachuk had a concert uh, here in Lviv on Friday. And, you know, there was sort of a secretive concert that you can't have. He used to play to huge football stadiums, but you can't do that now. It's too dangerous. And when he sang this song in particular, I looked at all the people in the audience, and they sang these words with such passion and hope and fear and energy. Uh, it, was, it was a hope. It was uh, a belief that things will be better. It was a worked-for goal to achieve. Uh, all that all together uh, in, in in this song, and, and that you know that was on Friday, and we you know we, 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 there was a feeling that we've been hearing okay Russia might escalate things, and so while everyone was singing kind of in that bunker concert on Friday, uh, it was a moment of, of gathering energy, and little did we know really that we, what we'd have to what we would have to face yesterday, mm -hmm. and you know yesterday was exhausting and terrifying. Uh, you know, you had Russia, and we got to remember Russia, a permanent member of the United of the United Nations Security Council, launched perhaps its most coordinated, widespread attack on Ukraine since February twenty fourth. Uh, uh, even the, the rockets crossed over Moldovan airspace. I mean, they're, you know, they're 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 pushing these limits further and further. Uh, places I knew well in Kiev, in the heart of the city, uh, were hit by missiles. Civilians were killed. Uh, and you know, when I, when I was speaking with you, you know, because today. Uh, I think, you know, you could, everyone was a bit surprised yesterday. People were afraid. It was, it, it was so scary. Uh, and then today you wake up and you, you, you face it better. You know, you, you realize, okay, we can't be complacent. We have to prepare better. But I'm happy I was able to share with you yesterday those raw emotions and feeling because I, I think that's the best service I can provide is to let, you know, your audience and Americans know what it really feels like. I mean, I was sick to my stomach all day. It was, it was that intense. Uh, you know, this morning we still had uh, three rockets hit Lviv. And part of the city uh, has been without power and internet. So this is continuing, but you sort of even get used to it the next day. Uh, are you in a bomb shelter, uh, Joseph? <laughs> no, uh, right now I'm on uh, in a sidewalk cafe, sitting here with my friend that owns the, the cafe, having a coffee. Hmm. Uh, we're not under an air alarm, though. But now, I mean, if there was an air alarm... I would. I don't think I'd be outside. Uh, no, because it, it is a new level of seriousness. It's unbelievable uh, that uh, a relatively normal life can go on. I was reading a report from Kiev uh, this morning about uh, locals strolling with their dogs in the afternoon sunshine, men sitting on benches beneath the changing fall leaves, playing chess. And uh, as, as this report pointed out, in, in the wake of those attacks, Kiev residents are trying to live as normally as possible. The residents saying the goal for the attack is to frighten us into panic or surrender. By carrying on, we show that we won't be cowed. And I guess that's the feeling uh, you have conveyed uh, to us from the people of Ukraine, correct? It, it is. And, you know, Bob, yesterday, I, you know, it was so hard to get connected. You know, to, to, we were using uh, Elon Musk as Starlink, and even then it was hard to get connected. There were a lot, you know, so we didn't, I couldn't get any information about what was happening. Uh, I wasn't sure if I would ever speak to you all again. And, and that was a real emotion that, that, that we all had here. I mean, we thought this could be the end. Uh, and, and everyone had that very, and we, we, we had conversations about that um, all day. And we had, when we had it turned off the internet because we ran out of gas, we were completely in the dark last night, hmm. uh, just talking around candles saying, we don't know. We don't know what's happening. And, you know, it's, it was a very scary position to be in. But then, you know, you, you learn from that. And, and, and today people sort of, try to joke about it a little bit and that's how you keep going you know and i wonder thinking about what happened yesterday uh, i have to you know R russia the kremlin said that that was a retaliation to the the partial destruction of that the, the bridge from russia to the crimean peninsula crimean has been you know ukrainian territory that the russians have occupied since 2014 and russia said this was a retaliation and i'm starting to wonder if that attack on the crimean bridge might have been russian sabotage because i mean it's, it, it, well, I think we just, we, we got to be very skeptical about everything we hear from the Kremlin, but amazing how quickly they responded 
you know, oh, they were surprised by this attack on Saturday, and then Monday they're ready to have, you know, after months of ineptitude, they, they can have this amazingly organized uh, event. Uh, and so I, I and I, because I think then when I was looking at, um, you know, I have to pay attention to what people in, in Europe and America are saying, and, and there are certain voices in America, for example, who after what happened today are saying this, you know, Ukraine, uh, you know, really needs to calm down and start giving up, you know, start negotiating. America needs to stop sending weapons because because people in America were scared, e- even though it was a little bit more scary here. Um, and, and, and this is what the Kremlin is trying. They're trying to build this propaganda narrative that uh, it's Ukraine's problem. Ukraine needs to give up territory and then everyone doesn't have to worry about, you know, Putin's crazy nuclear threats. And. Sorry, Bob. Uh, no, I was just going to say that it's an interesting theory about uh, Russians blowing up that uh, bridge to Crimea because uh, yesterday's strikes could not possibly have been in answer to that because it was such a widespread coordinated attack. You, you can't you can't plan that in that short a time. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think we, we, I, I sort of had this realization today, and because they hit, you know, specific power substations in little villages, uh, which also is very disturbing. It means they still have had good intelligence here on the ground, uh, and so, and, and you know how they. I mean, I, I know how they construct narratives uh, and their propaganda, and then I see certain people in the West eating this up and, and saying, "Oh, you know," and and this is where, and here's the big question: you know, will we let? Russia be the nuclear bully of the world because everyone else is afraid. And, you know, I, I have complete confidence that countries like Poland, Lithuania, Estonia, who they live, you know, they're, they're, they're close to Russia. They've suffered under Soviet oppression that they will they will never give up their support. But but the big challenge here is to help, I think, Americans and Europeans, you know, uh, together we have to find a way to not be afraid of Russia like the Ukrainians and, 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 and not to sort of uh, be to to fall prey to this propaganda. Mm-hmm. Um and and uh yeah and it is scary and i understand people are scared of the nuclear threat it's here where it's most imminent as i said it was terrified yesterday but we find a way to uh you know this is where we this is where we have to keep our minds calm and say you know how can we be better chess players uh than the kremlin i don't know how you sleep uh joseph but uh, i hope i hope you get some rest i I, I slept through i'm so tired from yesterday uh i slept through the air alarm this morning (laughs) oh man (laughs) you're a better man than i am Uh, uh, all right well uh, let's hope for better days and we'll uh, talk tomorrow god willing thank you joseph and uh, by the way let me just share this text i know we got to get to the news here but i I want you to hear uh what listeners uh have to say we got a lot of emails and texts after your report yesterday like this one Joseph's report yesterday uh, brought me to tears as I worried about his safety. His uh, open conversational style makes me feel like I know him. Uh, I hope the best for him. Wow. I want uh, you to hear that. Thank you. Thank, that's, that's encouraging and beautiful. Thank you very much. Now, we're all in this together in different ways. So Yes, we are. All right, Joseph. Be well, be healthy, be safe.